So I'm taking smart drugs like this to see whether or not it's possible to hack my brain into thinking faster, concentrating longer, and doing more. If, like me, you've ever seen the film Limitless, which saw Bradley Cooper become an absolute weapon after discovering a magical pill that helps him go from a struggling writer to financial genius, polyglot, and all-round superhuman, you've probably wondered how legit this actually is. Well, it's supposedly possible for us to significantly boost cognitive performance in this way, or at the very least some other way, by taking smart drugs or supplements known as nootropics. Alright, so over here I have like a bunch of different like tablets and pills and powders and various different like nootropics that I'm going to be testing out over the next couple of weeks. Now, I get it, some of you are probably thinking this stuff is either like highly illegal or just going to be a complete waste of time. Now, as to the first point, I can reassure you that all of this stuff is 100% legal and above board, but as to whether or not they're a waste of time, that's exactly what we're here to find out. Now, the concept of improving cognitive performance using substances isn't exactly new. In various forms, nootropics have been around for thousands of years, and traditional medicines in various cultures have used herbs, plants, and other natural substances to improve mental acuity. But they've gained a shit ton of recognition recently because of their increasing popularity in high performance environments. Places like Silicon Valley, Wall Street, and even the creative industry, where you've got everyone from Joe Rogan to ex Navy SEAL Jocko Willink jumping on the neurotropic bandwagon. So, without further ado, let's give this a go. Okay, so you might be wondering, like, why am I even bothering to do this? Well, I like to think that I'm a reasonably productive person, like, I always have been throughout my entire life. But when it comes to that deep, focused work, I probably only ever clock in around four or five hours on a given day. Now, while I don't have any strong beliefs or any real particular interest in nootropics, if I can just increase my level of deep work by just two or so hours a day, that would be absolutely game-changing for me, and I'd make so much more progress towards my goals. Like, at the moment, I'm Ali Abdal's head of product, I'm training for a marathon, I'm learning a new language, and I'm also trying to, like, balance a moderately healthy social life too, and also running this YouTube channel. And just being able to crank out an extra two hours of, like, solid work every single day would make such a big difference in my life, and it would probably make quite a big difference in your life too. So I just want to try out like a bunch of different nootropics to see whether or not they have like a sizable impact on my life and help me to get more done, focus more, and to think better. Okay, so like my upfront hypothesis about all of this stuff is that I don't actually think it's going to be that useful. You see, historically, all the herbs and natural ele ele elephants, natural elements that we found to be genuinely useful in our life were studied by scientists. They then distilled all those useful things and turned them into modern medicine. So, if something natural had genuinely, truly groundbreaking effects, my suspicion is that a big pharmaceutical company would have taken that thing and turned it into modern medication already, and wouldn't have just let it like chill in this box or this carton or this can or whatever like it would have been turned into a medicine already this isn't to say that i think that nootropics are like totally ineffective it's more that i'm aware of their potential limitations and they're probably not quite as good as the smart drug companies claim them to be but on the flip side i'm also totally aware of all the studies and all the science that suggests that nootropics are genuinely useful and can help our brain to level up so i'm going to stay really open-minded throughout the experiment and i'm really interested to see what the results show us so how can we test how legitimate and effective these smart drugs actually are? Well, I spent the last few days doing a deep dive into all the science around nootropics and essentially found that there are three broad categories that smart drugs claim to improve. Firstly, we've got memory. So that means both our short-term and long-term memory is improved through nootropics, as well as like the encoding, storage, and recall of that information too. Secondly, we've got mental performance. So this means that they help us to process information, do that faster, and also to help us to concentrate and focus for longer. And finally, we've got mindset, and this means they help us with stuff like mood, sleep, relaxation, creativity, motivation, and stuff like that. So let me show you the game plan as to how I'm gonna measure this stuff. Okay, so right here, I've got a human benchmark test, which essentially uses stuff like memory tests and a reaction timer and things like that to measure my cognitive ability. So this is basically how I'm going to be crudely measuring my memory and mental performance over the next couple of weeks. Then on this page here, I'm going to be tracking all my results throughout the experiment, plus filling in a daily journal of my mood, of my sleep quality, of my levels of daily focus and other thoughts and feelings that I'm having throughout the experiment. If you want to access any of those tests or this cognitive tracker thing that I built, then you can find all the links in the description section below this video. So yeah, that's about it. Let's begin by taking my first benchmark test. All right, so I've now done my day one benchmark testing and I've got my results. And yeah, the tests were surprisingly difficult. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how those potentially change over the next two or three weeks of taking smart drugs. So yeah, I'm gonna share all the results at the end of the video. 
Okay, so it is now day two, and I decided to go to a WeWork, so basically like a communal workspace to get on with some of my work. And I also took another of these Clarity Neurotropics from Thesis. And yet again, it's been another remarkable day of work. Um, I hope the audio is okay in here, by the way. Like, I'm in this like really random solo work booth. It's kind of cool, but I sense it's echoing a bit. Anyway, um, yeah, like it's been another like really good day of work and I've been smashing through a bunch of different things. I've written another script for another video. I've done some like stuff in terms of like, product management stuff for my job. And I've also managed to go to the gym and go for a run as well. So yeah, it's been like a super like productive day and I'm really happy with how things have gone so far. I used the final couple of hours of the day to smash through the last few things on my to-do list before packing up and making my way to Southampton, where I'll be spending the next few days living and working from my friend's cosy apartment. Okay, so right now I'm still in Southampton and I'm about to get on a four or like five hour train back home. And this is gonna be a great opportunity to see whether or not these neurotropics actually work. Because every time I go on the train, I start with the best intentions thinking, you know, I'm going to smash through like a whole heap of work, but within like five or 10 minutes, I'm like scrolling on my phone, I'm staring out the window and occasionally I just like fall asleep. So I want to test out these things and see whether or not I'm actually going to have the motivation and energy to actually get on with them some stuff because I've got to write a script, I've got to finish off some stuff for work and I just want to like use this time as wisely and as best as I can. Like if I can get like two hours of productive work out of this like four or five hour train journey then that absolutely changes the game for me. After taking the neurotropics I made my way to the station, hopped on the train and began plowing through my first task, writing a newsletter. For the first hour, I was super productive and felt energised, but then the tiredness and boredom gradually started to kick in. Eventually I pulled out my phone, stared out the window, and did everything I could to avoid my work. And I started to question, maybe these neurotropics are just a load of shit. Right, so I've been taking these thesis neurotropics for the last few days, and a few other various different pills as well, like this thing, and this thing too. And I know for the last few days I've been saying, yeah, like they're having like a positive impact on my mood, creativity, on my energy levels and things like that. But if I really think about it, I, I just don't think it's the pills themselves. Like, I don't think they give you super deep focus or be any better concentration. I just, I just don't see it. Like, it is true that I feel a slight buzz when I take some of these chemicals or s these, these pills. But I suspect that's largely due, due to the fact that they all seem to contain about 100 or so milligrams of caffeine. And I don't take caffeine day to day. Like, I don't really drink coffee. I don't really have, like, fizzy drinks. I don't really eat that much chocolate. So any amount of caffeine that I introduce into my system is going to give me a slight buzz. I also believe there's a large role to play when it comes to the placebo effect, in the sense that I genuinely want these to work. Like, there's a big part of me that's like, God, if I could just get out an extra two or three hours of work a day, just think about how much that would change the game for me. For the next few days, I continued taking various different neurotropics. And while I thought there was some amount of correlation between the neurotropics and my increased productivity and better mood, it was hard to say if it was because of the ingredients in the drugs or not. So I did some digging into the science behind the neurotropics I was taking. I realized that I haven't really explained kind of what's inside any of these boxes or these pills, stuff like that. So I thought I'd give you like a really quick rundown of what the ingredients are, or at least the main ingredients, and that way you can make sort of a evidence-based or science-based decision as to whether or not it's something that you may want to take yourself. Okay, so first up we have caffeine, and in pretty much all neurotropics, there is some amount of caffeine. Well, at least in the ones that I've been taking so far. I do believe you can buy some of these sort of like personalized neurotropic kits without caffeine in, but the ones I've been taking have all got some amount of caffeine, and caffeine is largely designed to boost alertness and focus, and it does this by blocking certain receptors in the brain, namely the adenosine receptors. Another major compound found in a lot of these boxes is L-theanine, which is most commonly known as a as like a compound that offsets a lot of the negative effects of caffeine, namely like anxiety, but it's also really good at boosting alertness and also apparently helps certain brain waves that can improve and enhance relaxation too. And a bunch of the sort of chemicals within these boxes help to lower anxiety, reduce stress and stuff like that. For example, ashwagandha, which is like this traditional Indian herb, is very well known for reducing anxiety. 
But these chemicals aren't just for like helping us to like feel better and to reduce stress. There are also other stuff which is known to enhance our brain function more specifically. So for example, in, I'm not sure which one, but one of these pills, yes, this one, has lion's mane mushroom. And lion's mane mushroom has been found in like various different studies on rodents and on humans too, to stimulate like nerve and brain cell growth. Of course, there's like a bunch of other plant and herb-based compounds in these different things, but those are probably some of the main chemicals that you're gonna find in most of the major nootropics. A few of these also contain L-tyrosine, the dopamine modulator, which apparently helps with focus and attention and there's some evidence to suggest that tyrosine supplementation can help with like working memory under certain conditions like when we're feeling stressed and it can also counter the effects of sleep deprivation on cognitive performance. The reality is is that a nootropic is just something that has the potential to enhance our cognitive performance and that can mean a lot of things like for example omega-3 fish oil. Like a lot of us will probably look at this and go <laughs> That's not a smart drug. But the reality is, is that fish oil contains like EPAs and DHAs, which have a role to play in enhancing and maintaining cognitive performance. Another thing that a lot of us take is creatine. Like I take five milligrams of creatine a day and there's some evidence that shows that this can boost our energy levels and that can therefore help us to like work longer and think deeper and stuff like that. And so when it comes to analyzing these sorts of neurotropics, it's very difficult to say, what impact they're actually having because there's so many other things that we're doing on a day-by-day -day basis that is changing our brain chemistry. For example, not only are we taking these various different like soft drugs, but we're also like sleeping differently every day, we're eating different things, like we have different stresses, we have different things that make us happy, we have like different familial and like friendly relationships with other people that are impacting our mood on a day-by-day -day basis. And so all of this kind of like operates in a way in which it makes it very difficult to narrow down the specific impact of drugs like this. All right, so this is now the end of week two. I've been taking these nootropics for the last 14 days and honestly, at the beginning of the experiment, I was like super optimistic. Every time I took them, I felt like super energized. I felt super enthusiastic about my work. I was really focused and I got a whole load of stuff done. And I genuinely thought this stuff was working. But come the second week, I grew like increasingly skeptical around how effective these nootropics actually were. Because while I was still, you know, having days where I was being productive, being focused and getting lots done, I started to question whether that was actually genuinely to do with the pills or whether it was to do with the fact that I had, you know, had a good night's sleep and had a nice meal and spent some time with friends and family and that put me in a good mood and made me ready and willing to work. And if we just check the cognitive test too, basically my day one results and my day 14 results are pretty identical. They're fairly similar. There might be a slight trend towards improvement, but overall, my results really didn't change. And so there's no real evidence that these brain drugs, these nootropics are genuinely changing my brain chemistry in any shape or form. And then in the daily journal, which is where I track my subjective thoughts and feelings throughout the experiment, in the first few days, I was pretty positive that these nootropics were having some kind of impact on my energy, mood, and productivity. But by the end of the experiment, I just was less certain. Like, it felt as though my energy, mood, and sleep, and all those other things were kind of at a similar level as they were before I'd been taking the nootropics. So I didn't really think that these, these drugs were having any kind of impact on my day-to-day -day life. And the stuff that was having an impact was the simple things like food, nutrition, exercise, etc. So if I'm honest, I probably won't be continuing with these nootropics. While I found them kind of helpful to begin with, by the end of the experiment, I was very, very skeptical. I couldn't really see a very clear positive sort of impact or causation between the nootropic and the productivity itself. And if I'm honest, I think there's far better things that we can be focusing on before we start dabbling with smart drugs like this. Things like improving exercise, eating better, uh, building up like a support unit around us and stuff like that. If you do want to give nootropics a go, Thesis and Heights are two brilliant brands and I highly, highly recommend them both. But I do think for most people, like focusing on the foundations first is going to be the most effective thing you can do to improve your productivity.